Platformers are the best video game genre of all time. In my opinion, platformers are basically games that where the central challenge of the game is navigating a character across multiple disconnected platforms, usually by jumping across them, running, or doing silly attacks that you have. They can also be 2D and 3D. On the top of your head, what platformer mascots do you think of? Mario, Sonic, Kirby, Crash, Kanola, Pac-Man, Banjo, Kazooie, Mega Man. Do you remember or know about Rayman? If you're part of the Super Smash Bros. community or gaming as a whole, you will recognize Rayman because to many, he's the most iconic platformer mascots of all time. Also, Rayman is cool. Not as cool as Sonic, but still, pretty cool. Rayman 2 is considered one of the best freaky platformers or best video games ever made. Michelle and Cell, I hope I pronounced that right, created Rayman and the publishers of Rayman is Ubisoft. Today, we're going to talk about the five main games of the Rayman series. Rayman 1, Rayman 2 The Great Escape, Rayman 3, Rayman Origins, and Rayman Legends. I'm not gonna go over the Rayman Raven Rabbit series because that's another entire different thing. Not the TV show, not Rayman Arena, not Rayman Golf, not Rayman Bowling, not Rayman Kart, not any of the Rayman mobile games. Not Rayman Jr. or not any of the spin-off or other stuff of the Rayman series because it's pretty complicated. So we're going to stick with the main five Rayman games in the series. Rayman 1 was released in 1995 on the PlayStation Atari Jaguar. Yeah, that thing. The Sega Saturn and on PC. Also for Rayman on PC, there is like so many ports of this game like Rayman Gold. Rayman Designer, which is just Mario Maker, but Rayman, and Rayman by his fans, etc, etc. And it was also released over the years on the PlayStation Store, the DSi Shop, and on mobile, which is, which is not on mobile anymore. I looked, and it's not on there, sadly. In Rayman, there is this thing called the, the Great Platoon, which keeps all the harmony and balance of the world. Until one day, Mr. Dark, and he takes the Great Platoon and also mind controls people and makes everybody evil to kidnap the Electoons, which the Electoons protect and look over the Great Platoon. It's up to Rayman to stop Mr. Dark, save all the Electoons, and the Great Platoon to bring store and balance back to the world. Rayman has to travel through six beautiful worlds while destroying six cages in each stage to save the Electoons, having beautiful animations, the most unique level designs of any 2D platformer, also while fighting the most coolest bosses with really interesting mechanics that you'll ever see in a 2D platformer, and gaining abilities to stop the evil Mr. Dark. The soundtrack for this game is really really awesome. Every theme is memorable and ambient when it needs to be, and it fits really well to the gameplay whenever you want a mysterious atmosphere. A funky boss against a giant saxophone. stages where it's just completely relaxing. As amazing as Rayman 1 is, the game is really unfair and did not age the best. The controls are stiff, the controls are clunky at times, with the most pinpoint accuracy platforms to drop across, unfair boss patterns. Overall, this game is unfair. But developers did not test or try this game because it shows it's really unfair. If you ever want to play Rayman nowadays, I recommend getting Rayman Redemption. It's a fan remake of Rayman 1. It polishes the game, gives every ability of Rayman off the bat. But yeah, if you ever want to play Rayman 1 nowadays, just download Rayman Redemption. Trust me, it's good. Overall, Rayman 1 is a good game, but certainly not the best Rayman game in the series. Now next, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite games, and also one of the best 3D platformers ever made, Rayman 2, The Great Escape. 
This game was released in 1999 on the Nintendo 64, the PlayStation, and the Dreamcast. This game is completely different than Red Man 1. Not because it's 3D now, it's because it's dark and moody. You could say that this game is the Shadow the Hedgehog of Red Man. This game starts out with slave ships capturing everybody, including his best friend Glowbox, which he meets Rayman in a cell. When Rayman and Glowbox unite again, Glowbox gives Rayman his powers back, which he got from Leave the Fairy, and they escape from the ship, and they have to save everybody from the ship by a lazy beard and save the world, and also gain your powers back from Leave the Fairy. Yeah, like I said, this story is pretty dark than Rayman 1. Rayman has new and old abilities, such as his air helicopter, shooting white orbs out of his hands, not using his hands to punch how he did Rayman 1, he just throws like little orbs, climbing, and swinging across some purple rings. But controls for this game are really smooth, like you can move and land whenever you want. Unlike in Rayman 1, it was, you know, stiff and clunky, now this time, it's more smooth than ever. And the game's graphics to this day, eh, they're good. It depends what each version of Rayman 2 you play on, because there's like many versions of Rayman 2 that, that I can list, but we'll be here forever, so. It depends. I would have to say Rayman Revolution and the Nintendo 64 version hold up graphic-wise to me, but overall, the graphics are okay. The soundtrack this time around is more cinematic and epic, like more like cartoony or calm how than Rayman 1's soundtrack. There's ones where you chase a giant spider. Exploring the first level of the game. Or riding a giant eel across undead chickens. Or having the best sneaking music of all time. This time around, the game's pretty easy. Ubisoft probably seen how bad Rayman 1's difficulty was, so they tested the game out and lowered the difficulty down really low. Not, it's it's super easy, like super easy. But I still don't mind that. The game's fun no matter what. In the combat system for this game though, it is kind of trash. Like the enemies don't really attack that much. And I just don't like how Rayman shoots the orbs. I prefer him throwing out his punches instead of throwing orbs out of his hands. Also, the voice acting for this game didn't age well. Ah! Yeah. Overall, this game still holds up. I do you recommend you playing Rayman Revolution, which is Rayman, a Rayman 2 remake on the PlayStation 2 and the Sega Dreamcast version. Like I said, there's many remakes and ports of this game, but these are the ones I recommend playing because I played so much Rayman 2 and I know which ones are the best ports to play. Overall, this game is awesome. Next, we move on to Rayman 3. Rayman 3 was released in 2003 on the GameCube, the Xbox, and the PlayStation 2. And also over time was released on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation Store. And it was also on PC. Forgot to mention that. This time around for the story, Rayman and Globox are sleeping until one night where Andre, the Black One, makes the air loans turn into Black One. Means they're evil. Then uh, Globox is waking up by the chaos and Murphy tries to wake up Rayman and and Goldbox runs away with Rayman's hand. So now Murphy grabs Rayman, takes him to the tutorial stage. After that, we get our hands back, and then Goldbox eats Andre, and it's up to us to get Andre out of him and also save the world from destruction because Andre wants to destroy it. This game is also still dark and moody, but not as dark and moody as Rayman 2 because the comedy lightens it up a bit. Basically, this game's trying to do a Saturday, Saturday morning cartoon aesthetic. And also, this game has a big focus on comedy, and I will say this, the comedy isn't that bad, and it also isn't that good either. Here are some examples. You better look out, or we're gonna be censored, mister. It's bad enough that I'm buck naked. Sorry guys, just airing the place out. <laughs> 
this time around, the gameplay and the platforming, in my opinion, is kind of a downgrade than Rayman 2's platforming. I will say this though, the combat in Rayman 3 is 100 times better than it was in Rayman 2. It's just the platforming and the fun stuff, like the rocket stages and the sliding stages aren't the same anymore. There is a lot of content in Rayman 3, don't get me wrong, but not as much as in Rayman 2 in my opinion. The controls are is just as good as it was in Rayman 2. The same abilities, but you can punch now instead of throwing those orbs that you were shooting out of in Rayman 2. And also this time around, you get new abilities for Rayman, which is his combat fatigues. The Heavy Metal Fist, which is from the name of it, the heavy fist that you could punch, and it's really stronger than Rayman's regular fist. The Lockjaw, which is basically the swinging ring thing from Rayman 1 and 2, that has this grappling hook. The Propeller Suit is basically Rayman's hair helicopter, but it, it goes higher. And the Shock Rocket makes you shoot a rocket out of Rayman's hand. And then there's the Vortex, which shoots a giant gust of wind. And the soundtrack for this game is probably the best soundtrack in the Rayman franchise, in my opinion. It takes the epicness from Rayman 2, and also some of the common pieces from Rayman 1 and 2. And this soundtrack makes Rayman more epic than it was in Rayman 2. Like, for example, you want a snowboard going down to save your friend, Goldblox. Being in a dark giant cave where something is lurking to get you. You shooting baddies? Although Rayman Free is a really good game, but not as good as Rayman Origins. Rayman Origins was released in 2011 on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, and on the PlayStation Vita. And also, this game was on the 3DS, and don't ever play that version. <laughs> Just don't. Please, just don't play it. It's bad. This is the more simpler stories in the Rayman franchise. This time around, Rayman, Roblox, a couple of teensies, and the Bubble Dreamer rest on the snorting tree. But some old granny is mad because of the snoring they were making. It was very loud. So she threw her husband at Rayman and scared him and the rest of them. Then the undead creatures came up to stop Rayman and his French and captured him. And also stealing the elect tunes that are stolen to balance of the world. And now Rayman and his friends must collect the elect tunes, stop the magician, and save the world. As you can see from that, this game is basically a Rayman 1 reference to the story because this was the return to form for Rayman. And the magician is a huge Mr. Dark fan, so you can tell that they want this game to be back to form. These games' graphics are so beautiful. Like, they're like cell sh shaded animations. It's so smooth and clean. To this day, it's still smooth and clean. And this was made by the UB Art Framework, which was a new engine for like Ubisoft games, which were only used for Rayman, Origins, and Legends. These games' controls are so good. I know I've been saying that for the past two Rayman games, but this, this one is so perfect. You can't even compare the Rayman 1's controls because Rayman 1 wishes it was Origins. And like I said with the plot comparisons for Rayman 1, it also tries to bring back to the abilities how it, how it was in Rayman 1. By giving them the ability to punch, run, and swim. Which are basic abilities that anybody can do. But eh, Rayman needs powers to do them, you know? That's how he is. And of course he has his classic air helicopter move. But soundtrack to this game is also good as Rayman 3's. Not as good good, but still good. It takes the comedy and cinematic masterpieces from all the Rayman games before and combines them into one. Like chasing a treasure chest.
in a uh, spooky jungle. Or, or fart in the magician. This was unused, by the way, but it should have been in the game. It's it's honestly better than how the it's better than the original, or just underwater swimming and enjoying life. I consider this one of the best games ever made, not just platformers wise. It's one of my favorite games of all time. One well, of my second favorite game of all time. I know I said Rayman 2 is one of my fa it's my favorite game of all time, but Rayman 2 is like my fifth favorite game of all time. I can list my favorite games right now, but I'll be here for a while. So just take my word for it. And if you want to get into Rayman, I highly recommend playing Origins. It is a good starter to get into the Rayman series. It's such a good game. And it's on modern platforms. Well, not modern platforms, but you can get on the Xbox One. It's backwards compatible with the 360 games. You can get on PlayStation 3. You can get on Wii, or you can emulate it with Dolphin on Wii. I recommend playing Rayman Origins. It's such a good game. Now next, we're going to talk about the final mainline Rayman game as recorded in this video. Rayman Legends. Rayman Legends was released in 2013 on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii U, PC, PS Vita, then over time, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Google Stadia. Once again, the Glade of Dreams is in trouble again. During our 100 nap, the nightmares started to spread and multiply, and they created new monsters, more terrifying than before, and these creatures go over to the Glade of Dreams and haunt the world, and the heroes have to wake up and store the Glade of Dreams once again. Basically, Rayman Legends is the sequel to Rayman Origins, with better graphics and on new hardware. Not saying it's not original, because it certainly is original, it has some original levels, original soundtrack, everything. It's basically like, how would you put it? The game's settings like based off like Vikings or Knights has that aesthetic to it. And you go through paintings, get to levels, instead of just going on a world map and getting to where you gotta go. The graphics for this game is beautiful. I'm not gonna say it's better than Raymond Origins because I love the style of that game, but this one's like more like paint, it's like more painted like if that makes sense. And you also jump for paintings so maybe that's what they're going for like okay. Knights. Aesthetic while having a while while having the game be inside a painting, if that makes any sense. The controls for Roman Legends are just the same as it was in Rayman Origins, but this time around you get every ability off the bat and stuff, just collecting the abilities over time like you did in Origins. Also, this game this time around has um, a ranking system in online mode where you challenge people to get the best high score for like a level or a challenge mode. Yeah, there's also challenges in this game. And then on the Nintendo Switch version of soccer mode and a mode where you can play as Murphy and touch objects or to navigate the characters. That's also in the main game, but you really don't play as Murphy. You control as Murphy while playing as Rayman or Roblox. Or the air characters. The soundtrack for this game is really epic. Like super epic. Here's some examples that why I think it's epic.
the music goals do exist, and, the, you know, they're part of the soundtrack, so. Here are some examples of the music levels. Overall, this game is pretty good. Not my favorite Mario Man game in the series, but I would have to say it's the most accessible since it's on newer hardware. Since it's on current hardware, like on the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, you know. So if you ever wanted to get started with Rayman, I recommend also getting this one. It's really cheap nowadays to get. And also, it also contains Rayman Origins levels, so you aren't really missing out on Rayman Origins. Well, it picks the best level of Rayman Origins, but still, Rayman Origins is part of this game. So if you ever want to get into Rayman, I really recommend getting Rayman Origins. It's really cheap nowadays, so yeah. Overall, Rayman's a really good franchise. I really want him to come back. Yeah, he's returned now from Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, but a new game, I want him to come back. Maybe a Rayman 4? I can only hope. That's it, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and bye!